I'm gonna let you in on a dirty little secret. A lot of the videos that you're watching on YouTube about your forehand are not for you. A ton of those videos are talking about adding 10 more miles in however many days, increasing topspin by 5,000 rotations, whatever it is. But you know what the truth is? Before you're adding more miles per hour, more rotation on the forehand, you have to be sure that you got the proper fundamentals. So in this video, I'm going to show you all the boxes that you have to check so that you will not limit your development as a tennis player. Let's get going. Let's get started with the grip. Acceptable to me is an Eastern grip or a semi-Western. I would stay away from a full Western grip because it just gives you more trouble than it's actually worth at the recreational level. Two ways to find it. One, really simple, right hand. If you're a right hander, of course, put your hand palm flat on the strings and come all the way down. And that should give you the underside of your index finger and knuckle and the meaty part of the palm on bevel number three. And we start from the top down. So one, two, three, and it should look something like this. So that's a more traditional grip. Roger Federer, for instance, has it. So check this out. And if you want a semi-Western grip, what you do is you slide one bevel further to your right. Of course, if you're a left-hander, you're doing all of that mirror image. So the semi-Western grip feels like you have the hand under the grip a little bit more, and you can generate usually a little bit more topspin a little easier. Second fundamental is the take back, unit turn. Whichever word you're using, what you do want to work with is actually both of your arms. Left hand, non-dominant hand, is on the throat of the racket, and you just want to let your racket rest here in that V. And you're taking your racket back in this way here so that you have your right hand, your dominant hand, between hip and shoulder. You don't want to be up here, not down here. So you're turning and your left hand has a huge role to play. You're balancing here and it helps with my load. So I'm getting a coil here. So you don't just want to let the left hand dangle down here. Second piece that you want to pay attention to is the side with which you're going to hit looks to the outside because that eventually makes it a lot easier to have the racket point slightly down and then brush up and forward. The next step is the racket head on the take back is above your wrist and then describes a loop or an inverted C, whichever way you want to talk about it, doesn't matter. But what you're trying to work on is you're letting the wrist drop. You're letting that racket head drop. And that's called, guess what? The racket drop. So I'm coming from up here. I'm letting it drop. My next check mark here is that my wrist is above the racket. And again, this might be personal style. You see a lot of players having the racket fully closed, can be open a little bit more. As long as you're not completely coming at the ball like this, you're gonna be fine. So racket down here, and that brings us into the third position, the lock-in position. The lock-in position, here's what it is. You've heard it, the wrist lag. Lag and snap. Lag, yes. Snap, no. So what you want to get into is this position here. My inside of the wrist and the butt cap point to the incoming ball. And at this position here, that is where the preparation is done. From here on out, everything that you put in before, you're loading, you're turning, of course the right grip, everything else, is starting to transfer into the ball. And it's also one of the most complicated positions, I think, for newer players because initially this here does not make a whole lot of sense. How the heck am I going to get my racket face up to the ball? If you have your hand and your arm relaxed enough, you do not have to force this. Do not force this. You don't want to get into a lag if you can't naturally get into it. Work on relaxing your hand and your arm. Work on just doing this in the beginning because it's easier to just control your hand. So your hand goes back, the wrist is open, and from here on out, I'm now accelerating, and the tip of the racket that just dropped down, just because of gravity, is now catching up with my hand. And that is 
how I make contact here. So I'm coming up and I'm swinging forward to my contact point. And again, relax, do not force it. What many people perceive as the snap can be super misleading for newer players. What you're not doing is this. What you are doing is you're rolling over the ball. Your forearm pronates and your wrist, because again, the tip of the racket picks up the pace, your wrist rolls over to the left. Of course, for a lefty, the other way around. But do not snap. Roll, yes. Snap, no. All right, we're getting to the contact point. You're coming from your lock-in position up and forward to contact. And where you're making contact, where you're most comfortable with, depends on the grip. We now talk about a strike zone. Ideally, between hip and shoulder is where we're gonna catch the ball. For newer players, probably mid-thigh hip is the most comfortable. And the way that you're getting into this contact point is also footwork. And we'll get into that a little later. How far in front should you catch the ball? Also depends on your grip. It could also be that your leverage is a little different. It looks a little different than another grip. So word of caution there, if you're trying to emulate a certain player, you have to have that player's grip. And then there's still a ton of individual style points in there. So don't yilks, break a leg trying to hit the forehand just like Federer or Kyrgios or Ash Barty, whatever it is. But you do catch the ball in front here. The hand, your right hand, if you're a right-hander, is in front of your shoulder slightly off. You're probably not gonna be directly in front. It should feel comfortable that you're not having to reach for a ball. You can drive in from your back leg. And yes, I'm showing you the good old closed stance. Again, we'll get into footwork a little later. Follow through and then the finish. And I'm talking about a regular rally ball here. Ideally, you want to have your contact point in front here and your finish can be over the shoulder, totally classic, or over the biceps. Rafa, don't try to emulate. <laughs> He's Rafa, he can do whatever he wants. A regular rally ball will probably ask for this finish here. If you have a different finish, then you probably are trying to do something different than just rallying deep through the court. So for instance, if you hit a shorter angle and you really want to give it a lot of topspin, then your finish might look like this. Or if you catch the ball slightly late and you want to hit a really aggressive topspin, that might be the buggy whip. So you don't want to cookie cutter always force yourself to have the finish over your shoulder, the offhand actually has a huge role to play. As I said in the beginning on the unit turn, it helps you with the coil. And it helps you during the entirety of the shot to stay balanced. So what you wanna do is your left hand stays out in front about shoulder height about here and you can yes still do the good old classic catch the racket or just guide it back into the V of the hand so that you complete your swing and the next checkpoint is the side with which you made contact this one here wants to come around so that your palm faces to the outside because then you know that you rolled over the ball now you feel really solid with your grip, your swing, your contact point, everything, but then you're going out and you're playing a match or you're just hitting around and your forehand falls apart. What might be the reason for that? To make it really short, could be that you're not getting in position correctly for every single ball. As Roger Federer just recently said, the best players are the best movers. And I grew up watching this one. Remember Steffi Graf? I cannot remember one instance where I saw her off balance or really out of position. Absolute goddess of footwork. And if you're not Steffi Graf, if you're not a pro, most players struggle especially with higher balls. And because footwork in itself, but especially on those higher balls, is a whole different topic, yeah, 
I made a whole different video for that. So check out the video here. I'm telling you in detail exactly how to address higher balls, what the footwork patterns are, so that you're actually able to replicate great technique. And I'm gonna see you back here soon enough with another video.